The RBMF manager can be considered as a state driving key on a steroid. It's a very powerful way to set uh, different arbitrary poses from a single output. So basically what we do is define a channel or channels, it can be different channels, that it's going to be the driver and we can set a different uh, number of uh, outputs based on the values of these channels. So the RBF manager it's on the M gear menu rig bits RBF manager and basically we have the driver and the control so basically the driver usually is a joint and the control it's the element that moves that joint so if the it's an, a regular rig uh, the driver this joint we cannot move it directly we need to use the control that's the reason because there is two two elements but you can um, I mean, you don't need to use this control if it, if your rig allows to move directly your driver, or you're using like a control as a driver directly. And the the outputs it's gonna be here. It can be n number of elements. So the best way to explain it it's um, create an example. So I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna start with uh, my elbow. So the first thing it's to set the driver. So as I said before, usually the the weight or the the driver is um, the way to do it. It's just a joint, but in this case because we have this very unique deformation system where I push this joint up to here, maybe we don't want to use that one. Maybe we want to use this one, but l just in case we don't want to use this these components, the ones that have the thickness, have a very special element just designed to be a driver. So if we navigate inside our structure on our hierarchy, we will find here one called reader and we have a reader B. So this element that is there, it's meant to be used as a reader or driver for the RBF manager or set driving keys. In this case probably because we have these support joints we can also use this one but I'm just gonna use this as an example we can use either both so I'm just gonna be using this as my reader and it's a B it's very important the A it represents the first joint or the first section of the arm now for my control I'm gonna use this FK control so I'm gonna set here the control and now I want to select which channels are going to be driving this RBF. So in this case, I'm just going to display only the keyable and I'm going to use rotation X, Y, Z. Okay, so I have this initial configuration done. Now I need to select or set which elements are going to be driven. So in this case, I want these three elements, these three controls. So I'm just going to create, select the control and create a new RBF. And the first time we do this on this setup, so one driver, several driven, we need to put the name. In this case, I'm just going to use elbow, oops, elbow left. And I want to use rotation and translation. A uh, quick note here, if you use a scaling, it's possible, but the tendency of the RBF node is to default to zero, means every single new post is going to default to zero. Uh, so it's gonna be a little tricky to set up. It's not impossible. Maybe I will do it in a future videos how to do it But for the moment just keep in mind that it defaults to zero So it's better don't use the scaling or it's simple to don't use the scaling. Okay, so I did the first one Just click here. I'm gonna do the next one. So just new RBF here It doesn't ask for the name because we already have the setup name that it's gonna be this elbow thing uh, elbow left sorry and I'm just gonna select translation and rotation and the third one new translation and rotation okay so we have our RBF ready and we have the default pose this is a rest pose it's very important to configure to set up this RBF on the rest pose always on the rest pose okay so now it's the easy part so what we can do is go to a new pose like here for instance I'm just gonna hide the joints so it's easier to see and focus on the result that we want so I want when you go there I want this here and maybe this and this just a little bit just a little bulgy here and add a new pose so it's added there 
we have here the input values and for each node we have the output values here in the pose we can click and restore one of the poses so we don't need to make like a range of motion where we store all the poses for us and then go back and forward it's going to be storing for us the, the poses and every time we click here and it's like active like that we can just adjust and click the button edit it's going to refresh the pose for us we can do it also numerically and if we do it numerically it's better later to use here on the file menu reevaluate node so it's going to refresh and uh, propagate properly this uh, edition but for the moment just keep on the visual so just set it in here and we have this pose so we go to this pose here maybe so up to here we want to keep it like that so it's okay to add another pose without changing the values because we want to to keep this stable there and then we continue pushing and now is when we want this one here oops just to push a little back here so it get more fleshy like this so i didn't move the other ones it's not needed very important if we add two poses on the same position it's going to error out you should not do that i mean i'm just going to do it for example so the composition failed so this is not a good idea so just delete the other pose never add two poses on the same position for the driver the driven can be in the same position but not the driver okay so we have our deformation here you see that's very nice i'm just force it up to here let's try to make something nicer here so i'm just going to push this this back and this a little push there like this and add a new pose just going to open look at that so we have the contact there look at how nice it's the deformation now if we compare with the original one it's it's, it's not different i mean it's a big big difference it's no colors okay so we have one side done great so that's it that's his how we work we can recover the poses edit this you can click here or here if you don't like one of these elements you can click here it's gonna delete it i'm not gonna do it because i want to keep it and um yeah basically that's the main use delete pose edit pose add pose very simple now we want to mirror to the other side so if you use a custom rig um you better check the definitions how you need to to mirror but if you use the am gear rig of course you don't need to to be uh, too much careful of the namings and everything because it's meant to be used with these naming conventions but one thing i want to comment here is if we mirror straightforward in some situations and this one is one of them it's not going to mirror correctly so i'm just going to do it so i'm just going to come here and mirror the setup so it did the mirror and it's it's set there so now we have the elbow left and the elbow right but you can note it note here and if i show you the joints you will see clear this joint here this joint it's getting inside there so w what's going on here i just said it's not needed too much configuration but look at that it's it's behaving funky so in these situations uh what is happening is like the controls are not properly set up to mirror poses so it's the rbf manager is using this uh, mirroring system from uh, the uh, synoptic to mirror this pose so if it's not working as a mirror it's not going to work when it mirrors so i'm just going to delete the mirror um setup here so be careful the right one delete current setup okay we, i still have my left one but my right setup it's gone so i'm just going to reset this so just go and this is in this final position so you can see here just need to reset the, the values there so it's going to go back here when we set the rbf manager what it does it's uh, create an underlying structure so here our pose is always zero out so we can always edit here with a clean curve we don't have uh, nasty um, values in the middle and also we have the rbf multiplier that's important so here we can turn off or on the rbf effect for each of the controls 
but here when I remove it, it keep the the wall space values keeping these values here. So that's on purpose. That's by design. Okay, so let's talk about this mirror configuration. And for that, I will need the synoptic. It's gonna be very helpful. I'm just gonna place it here. And then I'm just gonna show the attributes editor here. So basically, if I select these two elements and I move, you can see the Y axis, it's going down or up. That's correct. The Z axis is going to be invert. And the Y axis, uh, sorry, X axis, it's correct. Okay, so we know that the Z axis needs to be invert. So how I do that? Okay, so I just come to the control and say, I want to invert mirror the translation Z and here translation Z. Obviously here in direct manipulation, it's not going to have a big effect, but if I use a mirror, uh, sorry, just going to use one axis and I use mirror pose here, it's going to go in the right direction. If I use the other one, the one that I didn't set up yet, if I do it here and I mirror the pose, it's going to go in the invert direction. So that's the difference. And I need to configure both, both sides, this one and this one. So each one has its own mirror configuration. Now I know the mirror on translation is good, but we want to use also rotation. So rotation, this is not good. I want that when this goes in this direction, the value is inverted on the other direction. And um, sorry, here, this is also going in the invert but this is good. This is like mirroring behavior. So I want the rotation X and rotation Y also inverted. And I need to set up this on all my controls that I want to use on the mirror on the both sides. So I come here, translation, rotation, rotation, these three. Come here, translation is already set, rotation, translation, rotation, rotation. And translation, rotation, rotation. Okay, we have it there. This is not configured by default, so you need to do it by hand like this, or later we can use a custom step. Look at that, I just, yeah, here is this one, just be careful with that. So we can use a custom step to set these attributes, very simple. Okay, so we have now, or mirror configuration setup. So now if I want to use like very funky, like let's say this, and I mirror these two, it's gonna go perfectly on the mirror. So that's it. That is how we configure the mirroring. So now that we know that this mirror system that is configured for the synoptic is working means it's gonna work here. So I'm just gonna repeat what I did before. I'm just gonna call here and mirror the setup. And now, should be working correctly, but it didn't. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Looks like it was a refresh issue. So I'm just gonna redo it again. So I have my RBF here. And here is not yet done. So I'm just gonna go and mirror setup. And now it's doing it correctly. I'm not sure was what why it was not refreshing correctly, but now it's doing it, so that's it. And if you find a situation like that where it's not correctly placing the the right axis or the right values, you can always edit it by hand here. So in the previous situation, we was having this inverted, like this one was in negating here. So we can always go here to the pose. In this case, just gonna go to the right side and this is the R0. So just search here R0 and check out the pose. And you just can set the value like this and then reevaluate the pose. So it's gonna invert the, the value. So it's not such a big deal, but it's obviously a bit annoying when it's not doing the right thing. And in this case it was a refresh issue. I, I'm 
Again, I'm not sure. Maybe it was my my uh, session that was a bit corrupted or something. But now we have the the RBF for the for the elbows. Okay, let's uh, continue next video for the RBF on the knees.